I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. All right, all right, can you? Just want to thank everyone, and this has been awesome so far, and just want to thank all the people whose name you may not know who are actually have made this so possible. It wouldn't be, we wouldn't be here without all of you. And I just want to say just the energy that comes from this comes from someplace that is just beyond the, the individuals, is actually something bigger. And I think this panel is a way to kind of almost reset. You know, I, I, I saw some of uh, Dr. Ball's work early and his, his critiques were so, so helpful in us understanding how sometimes the things that we believe or we spend a lifetime trying to build, some of that stuff is just ain't true. It's a, it's a lie. And sometimes it's hard when you spend a whole life doing something to admit that you spent years and years doing something that when you get to the end of it, it really wasn't what you were told, you know, what they told you would happen. So I'm just so thankful that Professor Ball has come and, and we're gonna have a conversation really about something even more fundamental than even when we talk about money or even Bitcoin. It really talks about how we as a community, as people globally, how should we interrelate to each other? And sometimes we, we use capitalism as the foundation, but I'm not gonna say capitalism is the devil, so I'm not gonna get into people's religious things, but there's some real fundamental things that no matter what you do with it, it's still gonna just help maybe two people. And there's a lot of myths out there, and Dr. Ball has a book talking about some of these myths, and one of those myths you often hear is that, you know, black folks got trillions, $15 trillion, and there's this thing about how much money we spend. And it, he really deconstructs it in a way that's super helpful because the technology is not gonna save us. We're gonna have to save ourselves. So no matter what we're talking about, if we don't get our orientation right, we're gonna end up someplace with some technology that looks just like the place we started in. So we don't wanna do that Moses in the, in the wilderness thing grabbing on to, to this new technology, doing the same circle behavior instead of getting to where we say we want to get to. But I don't, I don't, he, he, and he definitely speaks for himself. He, they, they, he does an incredible job. They have some multimedia. He, he definitely needs to share with y'all some of the stuff that, he, you know, every day they present so much information. I, I, I subscribed last year. And, and I, oh, let me just, one more thing. Dr. Ball has come with us on multiple occasions to support the, the summit, and I just want to just tell him thank you in front of all y'all. So humbly, Dr. Ball, give it to him, and with all the love you got. First of all, first of all, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Peace. Good afternoon, everybody. It's an, always an honor to be back at Howard University, uh, even though it is the lesser of the area HBCUs. Coming down here from Baltimore, from HBC, from, from Morgan State, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a long way down to, no, I'm just playing, 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 I'm just playing. you know, go. H-U. H-U, yeah. Go Lions, go Bears, go everybody. There, no, first of all, and thank you very much, Sinclair. It is, it is true that, that we have a differing uh, approach. We have a different view of some of these issues, but, but as uh, someone who has been involved in uh, activism and grassroots politics, and trying to educate black youth for my entire life. I think it's important that we be able to build and disagree and communicate uh, uh, if, if the goal is national collective uplift. Um, so my work is just basically the argument around mythologies around the, the uh, history of developing from the top down, from the political and, and uh, economic elite of the society saying, how are we gonna deal with black people who are nominally free after enslavement? And one of the many tactics, and there have been many, one of the many tactics developed is to say, to encourage intentionally a black entrepreneurialism, a black capitalism, a circulating dollar mythology, a black business mythology, specifically meant to take black people away from what is our real only real potential power, which is our collective social political movement ability. Uh, we so, so in, Looking at that work as a media scholar, Africana Studies scholar, as an activist in this very city for uh, uh, many years, the mythology permeates all aspects of the black political spectrum from the most radically left, where I spend most of my time, to more conservative and, and, and even right-wing spaces. 
Uh, and so my work just traces how does that mythology originate and get implemented. And the newer version of it, I've seen some of the mythology coming up in discussions around Bitcoin, blockchain, blockchain cryptocurrency, et cetera. This idea, as we've already heard expressed this morning, if the goal is a collective uplift, a healing of the community, and not just the creation of another black elite, another black bourgeoisie, another segment of the community that lives separately, uh, 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 lives off the struggle and the wealth of the, the, uh, and the work of the community, if the goal is truly changing the relationship that we have and the collective have to society and society itself, then we need political power. We need to organize for political power and, and not be entirely consumed as the consumers we've been created to be of the mythology that says if you invest your money, if you circulate your dollar, because ultimately all that's designed to do is to tell us we're poor because of, we're, of our own behavior. We're poor because we're financially illiterate. We're poor because we don't take advantages of opportunities. And that's part of the intentionally created mythology that my work has, has been, been part of, a small part of unearthing. Uh, and why I wanted to build with, with you all and, and, and others that I see coming into my classrooms, coming into my organizational spaces, and just in the community at large who are, say, who are hearing this refrain, if we get in now, if we invest now, we can, we can overturn material inequality, we can change the relationship to society. And that's just unfortunately not how the economy works, that's not how society works, that's not how anyone's wealth has ever been created, and that's not why we're poor. So I'll stop there, but that's essentially what, what the intervention I'm hoping to have, which is to just simply say, we need a different level of clarity about what the situation is and a different approach uh, if, if we want actual change to occur. We cannot do it based on investment and, and, and trying to catch up economically. That's not how it works. So anyway, I'll no, stop no, there. No, thank you. you, thank you, Professor. I think this, this piggybacking on some great ways, we, we have young folks and we got folks like me who still are learning. What, what are some of the steps we can take to, to get the information to help us better understand the, the point you're saying about how we need to reimagine this and not get caught up in the myths? So I mean, I, a lot of the work that, that, first of all, gatherings like this, and to the extent that people want to gather with other black people to talk about crypto, I think we need to be in gatherings where we're talking about political education, political prisoners, capitalism, socialism, redistribution. So in other words, for this city, if you're in DC or, or in cities like this, and you can take the time to learn about crypto and blockchain and build with other African people around the world on that basis, then please add to the roster of work that you do supporting other entities and efforts in other spaces. Black Alliance for Peace, Community Movement Builders, Pan-African Community Action. I'm a member of the All-African People's so uh, uh, Revolutionary Party. There's the, All -Africa Pe there's the African People's Socialist Party. There's all these other formations that would love to see you all supporting and engaging and, and building with. Not in necessarily direct competition with what's happening here, but in addition to. And I think you could bring ideas there, here, perhaps vice versa. Uh, uh, anyway, so that's, that's what I, because there is a tradition. You know, Kwame Ture or Stokely Carmichael I heard mentioned already. I mean, you know, the Guardian newspaper put out a story just a couple of years ago where they finally admitted that England had participated for years in suppressing Kwame Ture because he was trying to unite African people on the basis of socialism. They were very clear in the, in the, it was explicitly stated, not because he was threatening on the basis of trying to build businesses and investment, no, 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 because he was, he was targeting a politic that this society had intentionally wanted to rebrand as the solution for black people. In other words, it was said explicitly, take black power out of the definition of people like Stokely or Kwame Ture and redefine it as black capitalism so that this generation, 50, 60 years later, would only think towards capitalist Wall Street investment solutions for, for, their, for, their, for their salvation and would ignore the wonderful traditions of suppressed, violently suppressed struggles that, 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 we, should, uh, uh, that we need to re-engage. Well, uh, it, and this is, again, we're going to make this one shorter, but it should be longer. When we, we interject or even say socialism, I think sometimes there's like a boogie. Like, if we think of 500 years of capitalism, it, 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 my name is Sinclair Skinner. That's, some, that's capitalism. It's problematic. So I'm just, how do we, 
how do we get our people to reimagine that construct, not using a capitalist you know, model, but, but just if you could give, and again, a, a framework of the socialism, just as, a, as a, again, another way of looking at how we interrelate with each other without some of the uh, propaganda that's often attached to the word socialism. So if you talk about names, I mean, my last name, Ball, likely comes, I don't know for sure, likely comes from George Washington's mother. Her maternal, her, her birth name was Ball, one of the biggest <laughs> traders and enslaved wow. Africans, and, and, and she married into the Washington family and brought with her billions worth of my ancestors. But anyway, um, listen, part of my work really is about the intense levels of effort that this society, more than any other, this country, the United States is the most heavily sophisticated, propagandized uh, uh, society in the history of the world. This, is, this society is, is, has, since the Second World War, spent endless resources, not just in military warfare, but studying how to manipulate public opinion, shape consciousness, shape our identities, manipulate us as they say, it, at every level with full spectrum dominance, even before birth, targeting us with messaging. We do not fully understand or appreciate the levels of psychological warfare we have been suffering. And their number one goal, people have talked about this as the unofficial religion of this country, is its attack on communism and socialism, as its defense of capitalism, because capitalism allows for more or less the, the anonymous organization of a white supremacist colonizing elite to rule us in anonymity without being recognized in, as, as, as having that role. So they can spend endless amounts of resources putting pundits, academics, scholars, engineers, anybody they can fund and put their, and in the field that I come out of mass communication studies research was developed specifically to suppress the other field I come out of, Africana studies and black studies, specifically with the idea, even in their own documents, of how do we take colonial warfare back to the United States to make sure that black people become not the threat that we know that they are to be. And one of the ways that they have done, they said to do that is get them to buy into this idea that they can become the middle class, that they can invest their way to freedom, that they can circulate their dollar, when everyone who understands how the economy works knows that no one's wealth has ever been created that way. No one has circulated their dollar to wealth. No one has ever started businesses to wealth. They have, they have militarily conquered the, the land and the territory, and they have imposed political policy apparatus that extracts the wealth that we all create. So I just want to say very clearly, we have already produced the wealth. All right. When we buy the coffee and pay our bills and we, we invest in our blockchain, we set up our businesses, when we do all the things we have all done just to get here today, we have created a wealth that is at an annual basis about, they said most recently, about $150 trillion of wealth that 1% of the population walks away with. That's public policy. That's not because black people are ignorant. That's not because black people haven't yeah. studied our finances. One more thing from work that my man Dejik Muhammad and others have done. From 1992 to 2012, black people started more than two million businesses. And the amount of revenue from the national sales revenue that those businesses captured went down from a mere 1% to half of a percent meaning that this is not because black people don't know how to start businesses and that black people are not entrepreneurial and black people don't care about money. No, studies also show black people are the most responsible with what little money we have. The problem is a public policy apparatus that says the wealth you help create gets withdrawn upwards, ever, ever, ever upwards, and then the rest is left for us to compete with, and then we're told, you go back and invest in Bitcoin and invest in the, in the business, and you go and do something that the wealthy never did to get the wealth that they have. Well, right on, Sorry. right on, right on. And we got, we got to go with that. That was that right on moment. So again, how can they, how can they, <laughs> how, can, how, how can they get more, talk more to you and get some of this information listen, about this? Listen, I'm not hard to find. I mix what I like for all of my stuff. Please subscribe to my comrades work at blackpowermedia.org. We have a whole crew of people doing things from a variety of perspectives. It's not just me. You don't have to worry about just hearing from me. Please consider doing that and, and let's build and join some of the organizations I mentioned. Please engage Black Alliance for Peace. Pan-African community Say your action. book, say your book. 
My book is The Myth and Propaganda of Black Buying Power. It is, I have a couple copies, I'll give them away that you can get them. It's not even about the sale. If you hit me up, I'll get you a copy. It's not that deep, but, but, but please engage. And, and, I, and really, man, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate being able to build and, and, and join you all. So thank you all very much. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, right on, right on, y'all. What a wow.